Hello and welcome to the fourth ever Sigma Sports YouTube Live from Sigma Sports headquarters here in Surrey, but it's a very special one. We're here in the workshop with Owen, one of the finest mechanics at Sigma. There are other mechanics that are available. Owen, take a bow. How's it going? And of course, Lucy is going to be here with us as well. Before we start, we've got lots of questions that you posted on social media. We will be taking more questions live, so we encourage you to do that. We've got some pictures and some images of Owen in his better days. Pretty good. Some yeah. really, really good stuff in that. <laughs> so we're going to kick off with a couple of questions that people have asked uh, before this evening. First of all, okay. Uh, if you do want to ask a question, make sure you chuck it in the chat below, and yep. we'll be answering some of those a little bit later on. We've got Cat moderating in the background, haven't we? Say hello, yeah. Cat moderator. Hi. Great stuff. <laughs> She does exist, she's not a bot. <laughs> anyway, carry on, with this. Uh, let's get cracking. Eh? Okay, Owen, so the first question, this is from Iron Man Cole on Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, they're asking, so disc brakes, they're not a fan of them on tri bikes. Is it true that you can accidentally pull the brake levers whilst packing the bike, for example, so you close the gap in between the disc, uh, meaning you have to get your pads reset? Obviously, that's not a great thing if you're traveling with uh, your bike to events around the world, mm. for example. Uh, yeah, you, you can do it. Um, so basically what happens is the pistons close. It's, um, it's basically to allow for wear in the pads, um, so it's kind of built into it. But there is inserts that you get for different calipers, so if you're on SRAM, if you're on Campag, if you're on Shimano, uh, whatever you have that are specific widths um, that you can pop in there when you drop the, uh, the wheel out to, uh, to prevent it from happening. So you can pull the lever to your heart's content and as soon as you pop it back in, it, uh, it's exactly as you left it. It's a, pretty, it's a good practice really to do. Where, yeah. I mean, whether you've got a tri bike or a low profile or a road bike, if it's disc brakes, you should really put some sort of insert Absolutely in there. Anything. Or even a business card, like folded up a couple Take of times. Take a business card, yeah. piece of cardboard, anything at all just to fill the gap. Um, I mean, obviously, if you can avoid pulling the lever while it's out, it's good practice as it is, but we can't always avoid that when you put it into a bike box or anything. So what would you do then if, say for example, you didn't put an insert in there and they had closed up, what would be the best yeah. method then to kind of like remedy that situation, which I guess is pretty common, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's kind of one of two ways. So there's, there's the right way, which is where you can go and you can buy power tool to a really nice uh, wedge. Um, it's pretty chunky to bring in your bag with you. Uh, you can use a flathead screwdriver as well. Um, we can do it on this one. Matt, Let's do it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Here we go. Ready. This is live actual bike mechanics in your living room, wherever you happen to be. So, we'll drop this out straight away. I've got a roving camera that might even come give us, I'll, I'll hold this. Do you want to pump Very the front nice. brake there, Matt? Pump the front brake, here we yeah. go. So it is right, it is right, isn't it? Throw it around, there we go. Yeah, that's it, give it a good couple of squeezes there. You can see it already starting to close up a little bit, can't you? You'll probably feel it in the lever as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you pop that wheel back in, you'll see how, how much it's rubbing. So this is pretty, pretty typical of what you expect. You probably won't even be able to get this back in again. No. No, no chance. Yeah. Um, so, either I would suggest using that more so because you're not going to damage your pads. So that's a special tool. That's to a do exactly specific this, tool to do that. So it's a piston press, um, or you can use a flathead screwdriver if you're absolutely, absolutely stuck. So we'll use that just to, to prevent any damage today. Does that have a park tool specific code? It does indeed. It's a PP hyphen 1.2, which is piston press 1.2. What a cracking code that is. A lot of thought goes into that. Yeah. Uh, so basically. I'm going to jam these up into here and you'll see the pistons actually retract back in again. Okay. okay. So we've got the hole up back in. Um, if you were using the flat headed screwdriver, I would suggest not twisting it, but just kind of wedging it left and right. Um, you've got to prevent any damage to the pad surface. And yeah, that's one important thing. When, you, when you are doing it with something that's adapted to just do it really gently. Yeah. yeah. bird off the edges a couple of times. Yeah, it doesn't make a nice noise. Yeah. Um, also make sure that the screwdriver that you're using doesn't have any grease on it, because obviously you're going to contaminate your pads. Um, Pop the wheel back in again. Look at that. Smooth the straight, straight back, back in. in. 
And away we go. Tighten it up. Good, Good technique, technique as well. Done, done it before, haven't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Give it a couple of squeezes. Perfect. That's, That's a lovely, lovely sound, sound, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the sound of utter silence <laughs> on, a, on a front <laughs> disc wheel. Bliss. It's lovely. 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 Let's have another question. Perfect. Well demonstrated, by the way. Thank you're you. looking good. I think you could, you could keep your job here, mate. Oh, I'm hoping so. You're looking good. You've got a future at Sigma Sports. Anyway, next up. <laughs> okay, so Tristan wants to know, uh, what's the best order for cleaning your bike? Like, is there a, a yeah. particular yeah, order? Good. Can you just do it any order you want? Um, I'd probably recommend cleaning the oily stuff first. So if you're going to degrease your chain, um, because if you clean your frame down, you clean your brake surface down, and then clean your chain, you're going to get oil all over everything else. So specific cleaning products and uh, cleaning equipment for your chain that you're not going to use then on the frame or your brake surface. You don't contaminate other surfaces. So degrease the chain, degrease the cassette, I would say first, and um, get the majority of the oil and, and dirt and stuff off that. Um, clean your brake surface, I would say, next with some sort of alcohol base, something that's not going to leave a residue around all of that. Um, and then clean down the frame after that with whatever cleaning equipment that you want to use for that, polishes. Come, a, a, a common question that, that I get asked a lot is to jet wash or not to jet wash to rinse your bike off. Mm. I guess it's fine as long as you don't get too close with the, with the, with the jet to the kind of like bearings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, it's always, I've heard so many different answers to that question. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I know a lot, of, a lot of the pro teams will, will jet wash bikes and I'm speaking to a lot of pro mechanics who will turn around and say that the pros will probably break the components before they wear out. Um, just with the amount of use they're putting into them. Um, also, they've got kind of a litany of spares that they can dip into. It doesn't yeah. cost them a whole lot. Um, I would say best avoided, but uh, just like the end of a hose, with your thumb over the end of it is enough most of the time, and then just a, a nice soft sponge will get most of the dirt. I don't know how dirty you're letting your bike get. You need to jet wash it, hopefully. But Pretty clean, doesn't get quite as much use as it used to. <laughs> so, there we go. Cool, and just a question from me actually. Um, so is it true you know, in terms of cleaning your frame, if you have a matte frame or a glossy frame, mm. should you be using different stuff? So say if I have like a winter bike and a summer bike, but they have both you know, different finishes on them. Yeah. Should I be using the same stuff or, or different stuff? Is it, is it better to use like, is it gonna damage it? Uh, not necessarily damage it. Some of the cleaners that you get for gloss frames will have like a polish or a grit in it that brings up the surface a little bit shinier, which isn't best used on matte going to end up glossing up your matte frame which nobody really wants uh, the other thing is if you've got a white matte frame you'll notice that the dirt doesn't come out of it very yeah. well at all so specific matte detailers will work better for lifting the dirt out of matte surfaces and then specific gloss detailers will work better on specific gloss frames you'll get a better end result cool. Good awesome. stuff. let's go to the next question uh, <coughs> so this is from someone that's asked on the chat uh, I believe so uh, they are asking, how do I fix a chain that keeps falling off at the bottom of the cassette towards the drill under power? Um, they've got a bike with an 1132 and ch changed it to an 1134 to keep the same chain. Obviously, okay. it's kind of hard without seeing the bike, but is there any, any reason that might, you, know, you might think in particular that might be happening? Rear derailleur, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a limit adjustment. Um, so the limit screws on the back of the derailleurs, you've got a high and a low. There's normally a little H and an L beside each corresponding one. Uh, the high limit controls the harder gears. It's probably the best way to remember it. Yep. So, uh, so down towards the, uh, the drive side or out towards the derailleur as they're describing it. Yep. Um, as you screw the, the uh, limit screws in clockwise, both of them, it pulls the derailleur closer to the middle of the cassette. So if it's dropping off between the frame and the cassette, I would say you need to screw your high limit in slightly. And you could, I mean, uh, when you're doing it, it's best to get your bike kind of straight and you can actually see the derailleur kind of move ever yeah, so slightly. Yeah, you yeah. can actually watch it and visually kind of turn it. And if you're on mechanical, it's a Phillips screwdriver generally that it's a Phillips screw head that you can yeah. do it with, isn't it, generally speaking? A lot of the new derailleurs are moving to like a two and a half mil Allen key as well, which right. is nice, you get a, a better feel off it. The only other thing I'd say is that if, if it's something that's happened all of a sudden, it could be that a derailleur hanger is bent or something, and maybe they, if somebody hasn't adjusted it and all of a sudden it's doing it, it sounds like a derailleur might be twisted or thrown the chain off for another reason rather than just yeah. a limit option. So and that's a really common common issue now, isn't yeah. it? Mm. But it's uh, and it can and, uh, again if you've got mechanically, if you've got a new bike and it's dropping off, it's sometimes the cables if they've not been pre you know, pre stretched that can be, that, that can that can be like a bedding in time, can't yeah, it? Yeah, like the the, uh, the cable stretches a bit. Cool, thank you. Um, so the next one, this is from David on Facebook. They're asking, what's the biggest rookie mistake that people make? This is a massive open question, but yeah, just as it. someone that works in a bicycle workshop, 
um, what, what do, do you think, think is the biggest rookie people rookie, rookie mistake, mistake that people make? I think you've seen some classics over the years, haven't you? Yeah, we, we see a lot of people who um, probably take on too much and then leave themselves under pressure. So uh, it's a pretty busy workshop here, and we work we work to a diary, which is it's really hard sometimes to squeeze people in. But uh, there is a couple of times we'll take a phone call where someone will say, "I decided to take my headset apart." two days before I go on holidays and now I can't put it back together again. So right. we do our best to try and fit people like that in and, and to do like emergency repairs, but you can't always do it. So I would say maybe just knowing yourself where your limits are and knowing what you can and can't do. Um, and like, don't leave it a day or two before you go if on holidays. Don't, don't yeah. just do it before you yeah, do, do, probably do a race best. of sport e going away. Probably best, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would okay. probably be it, taking on too much. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Um, so, so the, the next, next question, question. Uh, we will go with quick, quick question actually from me. As a mechanic, professional mechanic, what is your favourite ever tool? Like, what's your favourite tool? And you've got quite a few tools. We've noticed at the back here. I mean, a, a real wide. And you've got drawers full of tools. We absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, probably uh, there's probably this little one or that. One. And this, this is a uh, sort of semi mystery tools, tools, aren't they? Because they're, they're not, not the kind of most common. common tools but they're really really handy aren't no they? this is this is quite a nice so this is just a cassette lockering tool uh, you can use it for your disc brakes as well but you can basically get it over the end of a, uh, a skewer without so you don't have to take it out which it sounds like nothing but it just saves you a couple of minutes each time you do it a couple of minutes each day you can add up to like 20-30 minutes over a couple of days and um, so yeah abbey bike tools the crombie tools so it's shimano and campag lockering tool and um, that or that which is your pad spacer which we showed you earlier on uh, bleed block as well for SRAM, uh, or a bottle opener, which is always helpful on a Friday That's evening. possibly the most handy tool. That is it, big time. <laughs> cool. So, we'll go to the next question. Um, this is from uh, Sarah on Instagram asking, what maintenance should I be doing to my bike on a weekly basis? Is there kind of like a top five things or a checklist that if you go on your kind of Good question. Sunday club run, get back home, should you be kind of looking for anything in particular? Yeah, big time. Um, I would say, Cleaning, depending on, obviously the weather's been pretty good lately uh, here in London, so uh, on dry, sunny, hot days, you're not going to need to do as much in terms of even degreasing and cleaning your chain and stuff, but I would say like your chain should be reasonably clean all the time, um, so cleaning, degreasing and relubing, uh, checking your tyres, because nobody wants to be that person on a club ride who has to stop every couple of miles because they've got punctures, so making sure that your tyres are in check, um, they might be new, but they might have kind of cuts and tears where you've hit stones, potholes, even glass and stuff like that that have shredded them a little bit. Um, checking your chain actually is a really easy one uh, can save you some money so like components on bikes are getting more and more expensive so uh, like a simple chain checker as well um, so they are 10 and 11 speed specific but uh, so chain checker again part tool chain checker um, it's got two measurements on it the way we work is so you've got 0.5 and then 0.75 on it so if it slots into 0.5 which this hopefully won't because it's a new bike so you can see it sits up proud on that chain's new it's still got good wear in it if that did slot in, I would say you need to replace your chain. And then on the 0.75 side, if that slid in, I would say you need to replace your cassette at the same time. So keeping on top of that, you should get maybe, I would say maybe four chains to a cassette if you keep on top of it quick enough. I think that's, that's the, the thing, thing, you know, you know, it's, it's prevention, prevention rather than cure, cure isn't it? If, yeah. you, if you, whatever the price point of your bike, if you keep it well maintained, yeah. you know, the, the component is gonna wear down, you know, well, less, 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 less quicker, isn't it? So it's like, I think cleaning your bike, I think is one of the best tips yeah. in terms of maintenance. If you keep your bike clean, even if you're not an expert mechanic, mm. you're gonna lessen the kind of prospects of getting mechanical problems. Yeah. And your kit's gonna last so much longer, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. You, you pick up on little things as well about your bike. Um, so if you're cleaning it regularly, you might pick up, again, on carbon frames, like a little chip or a crack that's progressing further and further. Yeah. Um, there's, again, times where we get a uh, bike in the stand and it's absolutely covered in mud and dirt and stuff from the road and you clean it down and you'll actually find a crack somewhere in it where somebody has just neglected it for so long and maybe they've had a, a spill and kind of just not really worried about it. Um, you can repair them but it's still, it's not very, uh, not very safe riding down or riding in a group when you've yeah. got a cracked frame or anything like that. So I keep, think, keeping on top of that. I mean, keeping your rear mix, keeping all the moving parts clean as well, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if, you, if you get a lot of mud that kind of builds up over time, you get like this gunk that builds up, this black gunk in yeah. your kind of jockey wheels and that gets in the springs and stuff. And, and again, that can actually affect the performance yeah. of like a gear change and stuff like that. So a simple, regular kind of cleaning of the bike can make a massive difference. That acts as like a grinding paste as well. So if you get enough sand and, and grit from the road caught up in that grease that's in your chain and cassette, it will eventually, and 
more rapidly wear down your chain cassette with that and chain rings as well. I mean, chain rings, duration Integra chain rings are we're talking a couple of hundred pounds. Although it's one of the most satisfying things when you clean your bike, especially in the winter, to get a flat-headed screwdriver, put it in one of the rear jockey or slowly turn it around. It gives off that big, horrible bit of dirt, doesn't it? That's like kind of bletch. I mean, that, that's kind of weird. But that's one of my favourite things about cleaning. But it's actually leaving it to build up so I can do that. Anyway, that's just a little. I don't right? think that's. <laughs> no, don't do that. But it's kind of fun when you do it. Okay, so one from the the live chat. Um, this is quite a good one. It's kind of how many miles roughly should I expect to get out of a chain? And this is a Shimano one that they're referring to. So they know chain measures should uh, chain measures exist. But is there a rough estimate? I know that's again yes. a bit of a tricky question. Yeah, but like anything, I suppose. Um, I suppose it depends on where you live. If you live in quite a, a hilly or mountainous area, you're going to wear through your chains quicker um, because obviously they're under more strain more of the time. Uh, if you live somewhere flat, you're probably not going to be pushing as hard on the pedals. Um, well, hopefully you are. But uh, I would say with 11 speed chains, especially even 12 speed chains, they're getting narrower and narrower and they are wearing out quicker. So uh, anything like 2000K. 1500 to 2000k on an 11 speed chain is pretty pretty much what we're seeing on average um, but again it's hard to say it depends on how hard you're pushing on the pedals but that that chain checker would be would be valuable to anybody at home who yeah. fancies trying that but again to prolong the life of your chain if you keep it clean it's going to wear down yes yeah. isn't it you know again that's the simple thing it's like the more the more kind of build up you get on the chain the more grit and grime it's just going to wear it down a lot quicker so if you keep your chain relatively clean it's a good good practice after a ride just get mm. give it a wipe with a rag you know just yeah, uh, to take off some of that excess grit yeah. and it will just help a little bit um without a shadow of a doubt absolutely yeah just keep on top of it little and often um, so this is from John on Twitter, and uh, they were asking, what's your favourite group set to work on? So this is you, Percy, obviously, you've got quite a few mechanics here, yeah. both here and uh, down the road in our warehouse, so obviously they're going to all have differences, but what is your own favourite group set to work on? Um, probably lately, uh, so uh, I've recently just got the Ultegra Di2 with hydraulic discs on it. Yeah. Um, wasn't necessarily a fan being a mechanic. I always kind of prefer having cables joining everything so you can see how everything's working and how everything's moving. Uh, but lately, having ridden it, it is absolutely out of this world. Uh, Durace, if you're racing, by all means, um, or if you just want something a bit more flash. Um, but the Ultegra, I think, now at the moment, Shimano have kind of outdone themselves with it. It's spot on, exactly what you need. It's the sweet spot between, you know, not yeah. the absolute top, but still really, really nice performance wise. Yeah, smooth absolutely. Shifting. Yeah, spot on. A bit of a cue from me, I mean we're getting more and more bikes now, especially aero bikes, although we're kind of seeing a bit of a convergence aren't we in terms of light bikes, aero bikes, is bikes with everything concealed, you know, um, you know, uh, even if we're talking about mechanical, everything's concealed. Have you got any kind of tips for people that are trying to, you know, maintain their own bikes? Obviously any big problem they'll come to a bike shop, come to Sigma to get it done, but what kind of tips could you give to somebody with an entirely rooted system like the one we've got here, we've got a specialised bench here, which is so clean, it's beautiful to look at, but you're going to need to know what you're doing, aren't you? Oh, when, when, you when you're changing cables, etc., etc., et and generally maintaining it. I yeah. mean, it's quite, it's quite top end, isn't it? Yeah. I would uh, best tip leave it alone. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay, fair enough. Don't even. Don't even don't, don't, well, I wouldn't touch it. I mean, I, I, that wasn't for me. Yeah, it's, it's more uh, tips for other people. Bikes are just getting harder and harder for people to work on at home, which is a little bit sad in its own sense because it was kind of a like cycling was always like a working man's kind of sport, and you could do your own things at home and keep on top of it. But like we can see bikes like this more and more just getting fiddlier and fiddlier and, and little jobs becoming big jobs like a, a headset replacement is a, is a double brake bleed in this right okay. uh, so because all the, the cables and stuff run down through the through the head tube on it um, which is fine for a workshop in here we can manage it and it's not too bad but um, if you're working at home and you haven't got the equipment and you haven't got the tools it gets more and more difficult and you can kind of trip up on a few more things than you usually could I suppose so I would say the, the higher spec of bike you have and the more intricate bike you have, unless you're feeling very confident and you've got the tools at home, leave it alone. Yeah, I, I guess, guess some people forget, you know, a bike, bike like this is top of the top of the range. You can't really get much better. This is what, you know, the pros are riding yeah. out, you yeah, know, yeah, the side World Tour. Pete Zagan is riding yeah. this one, isn't it? Mm. Um, and, you know, it's like the Formula One of, of bikes. Mm. Um, so I think that's very easy to forget sometimes just because, you know, we can ride them out on the on the roads. It's exactly the same thing. It's something to bear in mind, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when when you're buying a bike like this, is the fact that they are, 
you know, technologically very, very advanced, yeah. and and, it, and it's you can't just kind of cruise straight in and expect to maintain them. You know, yeah. uh, learning the basics, of course, is always important, but they are so so high end now. That's something to bear in mind, isn't it, when you're buying a bike like this? Yeah, so be aware of it at the very least. Yeah, just be aware of it. Yeah. yeah. But like that, this is electronic and hydraulic, so I mean, your service interval technically does come down because you're not going to get cable stretch that we were talking sure. about earlier on. Yeah. And then the brake fluid really should be replaced once a year. Um, just because it gets burnt and it gets contaminated and stuff like that. So um, realistically, your service intervals should come down, right. although they might be a little bit more expensive. Sure. Fair enough. Cool. I've had some more questions. We're going to rattle through. We haven't got that much time left, about just over 10 minutes. It goes pretty quick. I know, I'm learning loads, sort of. Well, I know that I've got to take my bike in for you to sort it out, basically. Yeah, later, yeah. <laughs> um, but there we go. Okay, so um, this is one off the live chat. Um, so any hacks for wheel chewing? Obviously, wheel chewing yeah. is like a whole kettle of fish, you know. I've never gone there. Never I, gone I've there. never touched my wheels no. just because I would probably be the person uh, coming on the workshop door being like, hey, Owen, can you fix my wheels? <laughs> probably yeah. not a good thing to get stuck into myself, but are there any kind of hacks or tricks that if people get, I don't know, that can do that home maybe? Um. I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna try it, I mean having a true and stand is helpful. Um, either that, or you can use the stays. If you get a cable tie, sometimes you can tie a cable tie off on the stay. Use it just as a guide, so you can see where the wheel is moving. Obviously, being able to true it in the right direction is important. So having a reference point is good. Um, depending on the wheels that you have, you might need specific tools. Um, a lot of like carbon rims and stuff as well will go to specific spoke tensions. Yeah. Um, so again, a lot of points to trip up on. Um, the, I would say if you're going to start chewing wheels, small movements, yeah. um, don't get anything too wrong too fast. So if you do something wrong, it's only a small movement that you've made. So you can go back um, and work slowly, I suppose, slowly and methodically first. Uh, you'll get faster the more you do it. Yeah. And I think it's worth bearing in mind. I mean, we aren't going into particular brands. We've got Rovals on here, but I, I guess when you're looking at really high end wheels, I mean, you know, two or three thousand pounds for a pair of wheels, mm. as opposed to a pair of relatively cheap, accessible alloy rims, yeah. I mean, they're going to be far easier to true and kind of get wrong and adjust. But when you're talking about a high end set of, you know, semi deep section, deep section wheels, it's probably best to kind of leave it to the experts, isn't it? Because you might even risk voiding the warranty. That's something to kind of look at, isn't it? Yeah, you see people who go a little bit mad on the uh, on the spoke tensions and they'll actually round off the nipples sometimes, but you can't necessarily, your feel might not be there yet. Sure. Um, or even just cracked rims where somebody goes over the top and, and carbon rims, they are phenomenally strong. Um, but like that, you can go a little bit too high with the spoke tensions and you yeah. see some cracked rims every now and again. There we go. Uh, so this is from Rob Marlow and again off the chat. Thank you so much for everyone that has asked a question this evening. Um, he has a small slice in his tubeless ready tyre. It hasn't gone through, but is there anything that he should do to the tyre um, at the moment? Uh, yeah, there's, there's tyre boots that you can get. Um, so it's basically like a, a large sticker that you can either cut or just use the whole piece of it to... You're going to have to take the tube of the tyre off. Um, clean out the inside of it and basically stick this on and it will cover the uh, the slice. If it's in the sidewall, I'd probably forget about it and get a new tyre on there. The sidewalls are just too soft on, on most tyres, they're just a, a weak point. Um, but if it's on the uh, the top of the tyre or anywhere over the uh, the kind of the main body of it, um, put this patch on the inside of it, re-glue it, reseal it, you'll be yeah. fine. Um, slices are a bit tricky on tubeless tyres. Yeah, I think sometimes with tyres it can just be a, a case of bad luck. You know, mm. it you know you have no punctures for a year or so, and then um, all of a sudden you have three in a row, and it's just bad luck, situational. Yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah, stuff like tubeless can be really, really useful. You know, if you do get absolutely stuck on the road, you can just put a tube in instead. Yeah, and tyres as well have gotten a lot better in terms of like a couple of years ago they were always phenomenally tight to try and get on and off. Um, whereas nowadays they have the, end, the kind of technology behind them, they've kind of wised up to uh, standards, so they are a little bit easier. Some of them you can do by hand, uh, some of them, not all of them. Yeah. I think uh, we've, uh, I think that's, that's a really good point, like people taking tyres off and tyres on. I mean, um, mm. depending on your tyre rim combination, yeah. um, would you, I mean, I've seen people sometimes use kind of tyre levers to get their tyre back onto a carbon rim. What would your advice be, um, ge a general kind of rule in terms of using tyre levers to get a tyre on a carbon um, rim? Because it's quite, it can be fraught with a little bit of risk. Yeah, it? absolutely. You've got to be a little bit careful. Um, I'd say go off a feel. If it feels like it's it's too tight, maybe try and, and bite less of the tire and do a, like little movements and try and get little bits of the tire on bit by bit. Um, making sure that the tire is is actually 
the bead is down in the well of the rim. So the lowest point of the room will give you the most slack on the opposite side. Um, again, most tires you can do by hand if you do that. Um, granted, with a bit of practice, but if you, I would say start at the valve or opposite the valve, whatever way you want to do it, um, different preferences. Um, I start at the valve most times, pinch it the whole way around, and generally the, that last bit that people mostly struggle with will go on either by hand or with a tire lever very easily. There we go. And if, if you're struggling and you're doing it outside in the cold, go indoors. Go indoors, yeah. yeah. And do it indoors because that little extra heat can actually, yeah. can actually help kind of, uh, you know, well, loosen things off a little bit, can't it, on the yeah, tyre. So if you've got a really, really cold bit of rubber, it's going to be far harder to put on a rim than if it's warmed up. Yeah, it gets up a bit more malleable to it, yeah. Any more? We've got time for another couple of questions, haven't we, Lucy? Yeah, just Come a couple of minutes fast. left. Yeah, yeah, really good questions. Um, one from George Hyde. Is grease essential for stem slash seat post bolts? Um, yeah, I would say for the bolts, yeah. Um, get a good quality anti-seize. Um, people do round them off quite easily. Some of them, again, with the wedges, you see them on um, a couple of different brands with the wedges and then the easiest place to get to without specific tools um, or like extenders and stuff. Uh, bolts as well being made out of alloy is just getting silly so I would replace them if you can with a, a stainless steel bolt um, but yeah plenty of grease on there try and remove um, any Loctite as well we normally see just jams up um, try and keep if you've got uh, carbon fiber paste yeah. that if you get it on threads is an absolute nightmare um, but yeah I would say good practice yeah mm. cool so last few just while we have chance. Um, so one from Alan on Facebook. I quite like this one. Um, what tools should you make sure you don't go for a ride without? So are there like maybe three or five tools that you must have in your saddlebag or you'd recommend to have so that if something does go wrong, that you can kind of get yourself home? Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'd say like a, a good multi-tool that's not going to let you down. Um, especially if you've got through axles on a lot of uh, disc brake bikes now, you need a 6mm to get them out. Um, the last thing you need is a puncture that you can't get the wheel out for. Um, a good set of tyre levers, again something that's not going to break too easily on you if you do need to use them. Um, tyre boot is always handy, you can use the cardboard off the tube that you buy, you can sometimes fall that up if you, uh, if you get stuck. We even, uh, I've had the new £5 note, or yeah. All, yeah. all notes now, but yeah, £5 yeah. cheaper. <laughs> uh, you can just slip that on the inside of the tyre and it just, if you do get caught out with like a gash or something, yeah. then that can protect you. Know, I was doing one, one year, I think it was back in, I think it must be 1998, I was riding to deliver a Christmas card to my friend uh, who lived in, uh, in Staffordshire, and it was quite a long ride. Anyway, I had a puncture, but it wasn't just a puncture. The whole sidewall exploded, um, and I thought, oh my god, what am I going to do? So I had his Christmas card in my back pocket, so I thought I'd use that. So basically, tore up my mate's Christmas card, put it on the inside of the tyre, got myself to his house, but I only gave him half a card because obviously it's in, in the inside of my tyre. But no, it can work. I mean, sometimes you look in your back pockets, five pound note, Christmas card, could be a birthday card. I've even found a. I'll tell you what I, what I also found at the side of the road, which helped me once. My saddle kept slipping down on a bike, again about 15 years ago, and I found a, um, it was a McDonald's uh, milkshake cup, yeah. and, and it was kind of shaped like the, the, like the, like the seat tube, yeah. tore it, put it in as a shim, Bob's your uncle rode the whole season with a McDonald's cup in my race bike. <laughs> that is a fact. I think you that's a very good hack. Put, put one in your saddle bag. <laughs> there we go. A little McDonald's cup. Little hack. Just look around. That's you know, in nature. nature. Yeah. Or just, or basically litter. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've maybe got time for one more, eh? But yeah. let's slip another one in to kind of, so we've got a proper question rather than me waffling on about the... the no, I really like that, days. actually. I've learned something. <laughs> I think I learned that. Yeah, well. definitely, yeah. Um, okay, one more question. Let me find a good one to end with. Um, uh, I don't know where to go from that. No, I've got another one. I've got another one. <laughs> Riding out in the winter, I think this was 96, um, my um, front, when, when we had levers here, sort of down tube shifters, my, I didn't maintain my bike that well, and my left hand lever for the big ring fell off. Okay, so I thought, what am I going to do? How am I going to re tether it? Didn't have any zip ties. So I looked in a grass verge, found a piece of old tow rope, and tied it on with an orange piece of tow rope, which I couldn't cut, and it was about four foot long. So I bound it around my top tube. Bright orange, tied it in a, in a reef knot, got home. Job done. That's, That's the, the truth. truth. <laughs> there you have it. Top hack. <laughs> <laughs> Top hack. 
a hat stick of hacks. And you had a new rope. <laughs> and, had a, and had a bit of tow rope. Right, orange. What's tow rope? <laughs> rope for <laughs> towing. Oh, I like the fact that I know what tow rope is. It's, it's a rope used for towing. For towing oh. cars. <laughs> yeah. I but weird. often people just chuck it at the side of the road. Okay. One more question to finish it up. Okay, one more and I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> um... So Ben wants to know, what's the fastest lube in dry conditions? Ooh. In your opinion, obviously, but um, yeah, obviously you use quite a lot of different products in the workshop. Is yeah. there one in particular which you think works quite well? Uh, depending on your budget, I would say either the ceramic speed lube, if you can afford it, the UFO stuff, um, put the chain into a bag, pour it in on top. Uh, leave it for a little while, take it out, let it dry. That's actually a very good hack for cleaning your chain. Obviously in the workshop here, we've got um, Cleaners, yeah, part, yeah, parts washers that, um, you know, we can just put the parts through nice and easy. Cleaning your chain at home, if you've got a little plastic bag, mm. I learned this from you actually, uh, put some degreaser, put some degreaser and a little plastic bag, put the chain in, give it a bit of a mix around. I guess you could do the same thing for a cassette as well, but you yeah. need to find a bigger bag. <laughs> yep. um, mix it around, help get the old stuff off the chain first. And then, yeah, yeah do, do exactly the same thing yeah. with something like squirt lube or, yeah, whatever like lube. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Sorry, I've thrown you off there. No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. I've learned something else now. Nice little thing at lube chat there. Thank you very much indeed for that. Is that, that the last question? I think that is all we're going to have time for. Look, look, we've, got, we've gone over. We've given you, although this is free, we've given you even more free content. That's what the Sigma Swartz YouTube channel is all about. Thanks very much for watching. We'll do another one of these soon because there's lots more questions that we couldn't get through. Oh, you've been brilliant. Thanks very much for answering all those questions. Lucy, as ever, for me, it's goodbye. But so you don't miss any other of our rather cool content that's coming out, make sure you subscribe to the Sigma Sports YouTube channel. But for now, from us in Surrey, at the hub of cycling, Sigma Sports headquarters, it's goodbye.